Elliot Spitzer has been making all the rounds on, I think he's been on every single MSNBC show over the last 18 hours to announce that he is going to be running for New York City. Is it comptroller or controller? Comptroller. It's comptroller. Comptroller. Some people say controller. Um, <laughs> it, it, so, I mean, it, uh, I'm sure people do want to be the controller. I was thinking this about is the comptroller. Yes. I was thinking about he controls, he comptrols the, uh, the finances of the city. The, the most interesting aspect of this, of course, is that the city, through its pension funds, has potentially a lot of influence over the governance of corporations. Now, it's not quite clear exactly how much influence the individual comptroller has. There are committees that are set up that also sort of provide the guidance for these pension funds in terms of how they vote and what they can do in terms of forcing certain changes in corporate governance if they hold a lot of uh, shares in any given corporation. Uh, but there is some speculation that for a guy like Spitzer, uh, who has his issues with Wall Street, that this could be a means in which he imposes certain corporate governance. I mean, I think the other story, obviously, is that he is starting up his political career again. It's a fascinating exchange on Morning Joe this morning that uh, I don't know how much was revealed here, but of course, everyone knows the story at this point. Five years ago, Elliot Spitzer was the governor of New York State. He was ostensibly investigated because a bank notified the IRS that he was pulling out sums of money that appeared to be, be uh, designed to avoid the reporting requirements. If you pull out anything more than $10,000 in cash from a bank account, the bank is required to report this to federal officials. And uh, this, of course, is how Rush Limbaugh got busted for his, um, what was it, Percocet or? Um, no, it's. Uh, hillbilly heroin, I know, right. is what the uh, nickname is for the drug that he was apparently. Oxycontin. Oxycontin. And he was paying off his cleaning lady to get him more, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, essentially the story goes that Spitzer at one point pulled out $9,500 in this led to a massive um, investigation. Uh, I, I believe the story is, uh, which we have really have not heard, and this is all speculation on my part, but Elliot Spitzer made some extremely powerful enemies in his time as uh, New York State Attorney General. And I'm quite convinced that some of those enemies um, be it heads of uh, banks or investment firms, must have had private investigators trying to figure out exactly what they could find on Spitzer. And uh, that information made its way to the uh, Bush uh, Department of Justice. And the rest is, as they say, history. Nevertheless, and frankly, I think I've said on this program in various times that um, from a public policy standpoint, I don't have a problem with prostitution. I think it should be legalized. The, the biggest problems with prostitution come in the exploitation of sex workers, uh, which um, is a function of prostitution being illegal. And, however, it's also, uh, there's a tremendous amount of hypocrisy involved in someone who, as Attorney General, 
was prosecuting Johns and then was engaging in the same uh, act. I think uh, had he not been so, uh, or had he not engaged in any type of, uh, of, of policy to further the prosecution of Johns, uh, it wouldn't have been as much of an issue in my mind anyways. Uh, the rest is, is political. And so too is this question as to whether or not you need to be banished from politics forever if you do something like that. I mean, certainly there was a price paid in that he resigned from uh, his position as governor. And I imagine, though I'm not sure I've seen any reporting on this, that prosecutors basically said, that's the deal we'll make. No further prosecution if, uh, if you resign, because the amount of tax dollars spent on a prosecution of something such a uh, low-level crime would probably not, not be the best uh, use of resources uh, for a guy who's going to fight it in that way, and they certainly got a, a pound of flesh. And so understand it is in that context in which when Spitzer shows up on Morning Joe, and who was it? It wasn't Joe. It was uh, Mark Halpern. Halpern. They really, really uh, don't want to uh, challenge Joe's job over there by putting someone in with any type of charisma. Uh, and, of course, generally... Hi, I will be filling in for Joe. I will be filling in for Joe. <laughs> Apparently, uh, they couldn't get uh, Mike Barnacle. He was uh, too busy, I guess, um, at his altar for Whitey Bulger. And, you know, this is a show that is often, that is <laughs> headed by a former politician uh, who, at the very least, uh, we never quite found out exactly what went on, but there was uh, some, uh, certainly some scandal uh, surrounding um, Joe Scarborough with the uh, death of an intern in his office, uh, but... Not that there was maybe anything to that scandal, but that's just the way the media works. Uh, Mike Barnacle, of course, was uh, fired from the Boston Herald for plagiarism, which is, seems to be a fairly important um, ethical violation when you're a journalist. It's hard, you know, I mean, you'll recall that when uh, other uh, journalists have made up stuff, the outcry that some of these journalists would get paid $20,000 to go to a speaking engagement. It is pretty stunning that Barnacle doesn't really take much grief uh, for his role in, that, uh, in, in plagiarizing as a journalist, uh, ostensibly now a new job in journalism. But uh, be that as it may, here is the exchange between Halpern and Spitzer. Try and see if you get a sense of where Halpern's... Uh, uh, mentality uh, lies when it comes to Spitzer. I mean, yes, you're on this show. Obviously, uh, there's no reason to give a Spitzer a free pass. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, the issue is, as it will be with Wiener uh, in some respects, the issue is, what does the electorate say? Here's Halpern and Spitzer uh, this morning uh, from Morning Joe. Do you win this position? Will you ever lie to the public once elected? No. no. Never? No. So Meek asked you in the beginning how people can be confident that there won't be a repeat of the behavior before, and you said you reflect it. Just speak a little bit more about that. What does that mean? That, that what, what is what you've done in the last five years? How does that convince people and well, reassure people that it won't happen again? I've tried to, to do things that matter in a, in a small and quiet way. Now, that, that doesn't persuade people about recurrence, but I've also thought deeply and, and recognized that I would need to answer these questions, and, I, and I've said, look at the pain I've caused, caused to... But if, if you win, you will not really have paid... You've paid some price, obviously, but you will not have had your public career ended. So, again, right. wouldn't, wouldn't that, to some extent, reinforce the notion that you could do what you wanted to do? No, I'm not quite sure. I mean, and, and I think that there has been a substantial price to be paid, and I'll let others... That, that, that is just a, a, a stupid question. 
aside from the fact that I, I don't know what the New York Post has uh, on its cover today, but I'm sure. Yesterday uh, was here we ho again. Yes. I, I think it's pretty hard to say that he hasn't paid a price. And certainly there is very little precedent very little precedent in American public life of politicians who have their careers summarily ended by a sex scandal or, say, Ollie North, uh, maybe uh, lying to Congress or, I mean, so on and so on. I mean, this is, it's just an absurd uh, question, the idea that he hasn't paid a price. Meanwhile, um, Where's Mike Barnacle? What, what price did Mike Barnacle pay? All right, continue. The uh, New York Post front page, by, today, uh, by the way, is uh, Sleazy Does It. There you go. You know, determine big, small, adequate or inadequate, but resigning the governorship and then dealing with the aftermath of that and dealing with everything that has flown from it, that was a pretty significant Are there price. any things people in elective office, a high office like governor of New York, could do that involve law breaking and lying to the public that you would consider as a voter disqualifying? Or nothing's disqualifying no. if a person comes back and says, look what I've done for the last five years, look at my great ideas. Or are there things that are sure, disqualifying? Sure, sure, like sure, what? There, sure there are. I mean, I, th I think there's... What would be disqualifying? I, th I think there is a difference between private and public lives. And I'm not the one to begin to articulate this distinction at this point, because I'm, I'm in a, a uniquely bad position to try to articulate it. Right. But I think there is a divide there that is something we do want to think about at a certain point in time. Awesome. All right, I, 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 will, I, I will step in and answer this question. If you engage in activities that, uh, as a public official, that abuses your office, the position that you're holding, if you're involved in graph, if you're involved in uh, using the apparatus of government to, uh, to further your own ends, if you are um, breaking laws that are a function of your position, not as an individual, uh, that is a rather big distinction. I mean, you know, Buddy Cianci got the, got the uh, I think it was the, 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 the chief of the state police to hold down his uh, wife's uh, lover while he beat him up with a bat, I think. I mean, I'm doing this from recollection. And then went to jail and came back out and was reelected uh, mayor of Providence. That seems to be the decision of the voters at that point. Personally, I feel like if you abuse your position in some fashion to enrich yourselves or that has some material degradation of the systems of our government, that's very different than engaging in illegal behavior that has no impact short of the way the, tr the, the public perceives you on that position. Any interest in finding out what Buddy Cianci actually assaulted that guy with? Yeah, what was it? A lit cigarette, an ashtray, and a fireplace log. Okay. Apologies to Buddy Cianci. There. It, was, it wasn't a baseball bat. That would have been an upgrade. Good. Lying as the governor of New York well, it depends is not about, disqualifying. Well, it depends about what. I, I think you, we all know that politicians dissemble all the time about negotiations what, on substantive issues and probably on personal issues as well. And so it, it, it is, is a question of where, when, how, and on what issue. I, I think there's slightly greater subtlety to this in terms of the art of both governance and how you then determine whether what people have done is dis so disqualifying. Just one more. So sure. is, is an elected official governor of New York, controller of New York, lying about his or her personal life when asked about it in, in a public capacity, that's fine? No, I didn't say it's fine, but you asked if it was disqualifying. And I think that, again, I, th I think we're going down here a path here where it requires more time to really parse out what that boundary is between the private and the public. Now, I'll give you something that's disqualifying. If people lie about their taxes, not having paid their taxes and all the rest, then I think that is disqualifying. But you, but you lied about illegal activity. 
No, I, I lied about personal sexual activity, yes, and, and I did that. I'm not trying to diminish it. You weren't I'm, lying about an affair, a uh, consensual affair. You were lying about illegal uh, activity. Okay, that's correct. So, you, you're, but you're saying that lying about illegal activity to you is not disqualifying. This is, I will let the public make that, that determination. There you go. So, um, interesting exchange, and, you know, I, I, I don't, I certainly would not be terribly happy with my spouse uh, if she was engaging in this activity. Um, and I don't know that um, this would be a guy that I would say, like, hey, I really feel I can trust you with some, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, but that's not really the issue here. You know, and it's now up to the voters to decide. Uh, who they're going to vote for. I just, I, I, I find it interesting. I've had him uh, on this program uh, many times as a guest. I've been on his programs many times, uh, both of them. And I, from a public policy standpoint, I remain a fan. Anybody uh, who is going to be that aggressive about going after the, uh, the bankers uh, is... Someone I would like to see in office, frankly. Uh, and, you know, it's up to his wife as to whether or not she wants to still be involved in that, with that guy. And uh, at this point, she has, for whatever reason, has made that decision.